Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a video on the one tick CCA adder I talked about in the last video. Um, but before we get over there and talk about that, we're going to talk about a mechanic called comparator priming. So to start off, let's realize that one tick signals do not affect comparators at all, which it's kind of a restriction, but if you're clever enough, you can use this to create a kind of instant logic. So if we take two signals out here, we run them side by side, and we have one signal offset by one tick. And they're both going to receive a one tick signal, just like this. So first of all, again, if we didn't have this signal, nothing's going to happen. Let's just get an output here so you can see it. Nothing's going to happen because one tick signals don't work. But if we add this second signal, what do you think is going to happen? So we already have this first signal going in. It's not really powering it, powering the comparator, but the comparator recognizes that it is being powered. So after this one tick signal comes in and goes away, right after it goes away, actually, this second signal is going to be powered. And the comparator has still recognized that it's been powered by this signal and it's going to be kind of instantly powered by this second signal. And then it will go out and power. So it will be powered. But now just to kind of show that this is instant, let's take this signal here out and then we'll convert this two tick signal out into a one tick signal using a comparator clock. So normally we'd expect that this repeat or this piston will fire first and then this one will fire after that. Because let's follow the trail here, we got one tick, two tick output and one tick output. So in theory, this one should fire first. But if we see here, they fire at exactly the same time, which is kind of counterintuitive. But it's because we have this priming signal. Without this priming signal, first of all, the comparator is not going to fire because it's a one tick signal. So this priming signal is very important to the functioning of this mechanic. Um, it's also good to note that without like an input, nothing's going to happen. Like You actually need to input something. Um, and this only works in Java Edition because in Bedrock Edition, uh, one tick signals do work with comparators. So the priming signal would always fire the, um, the piston. And instead of in this case, it only works when you have an input. So that's kind of the main mechanic. Another thing I want to show is how to do inversions using this. This is a little more counterintuitive because it has more to do with some sub tick mechanics and it's a little bit more weird. But if we take this and then we take the input to this inverter, we run it all here and we take an output, invert that. We should see that when, come on, let's not break that. We should see that when a signal runs through here, the piston does not fire. And when no signal runs through, the piston fires. So it's a functioning inverter. Now you can probably, you're probably saying, why don't you just do a two tick repeater here and not worry about this? Now, 
it looks like it functions the exact same an input no output no input and output however if we want to make this um, zero uh, two tick pipelineable meaning that you can send in a signal every two ticks that does not work for some weird reason that I actually don't even understand you need to have it like this it takes up more space yes but it makes it way more efficient um, I discovered that the hard way because I built the whole adder and then realized it's not actually uh, two tick pipelineable so that's something important to note that you actually need two priming signals when handling an inverter um, now let's talk about how this is actually useful because right now it doesn't seem very useful if we go back to this original example this signal on this circuit I'm building right here is the exact same delay as this one except it's like five times smaller it like looks like it's doing the same thing but it's five times smaller um, and that's kind of one of the downsides of this is it doesn't really work in every case so let's talk about a case that it does actually help you so let's say we had a CPU and we had an instruction that was four ticks ahead of the data so we have an instruction line here that will replace the priming line and it is four ticks ahead of the data line so now if we get rid of this we don't really need that repeater now we just need to make sure that when we time the instruction signal it hits this point one tick before the data hits this point and as long as that happens the data will run through this comparator instantly which is very useful but it's only useful when you know you're going to be utilizing this comparator if you don't know that you that a data signal is coming in then it's just as useful as this except it's a lot bigger so again it's not really useful for everything but there are some cases where it really helps things out so now let's go over to the adder so this is the adder it's still in kind of the prototype phases it's kind of bulky and big and redesigning it over there but it's it works um, so we've got the first um, XOR gate we have the last XOR gate we have a signal strength extender we have the carry logic right in here and that's about it so now how is this different than any normal CCA and if you don't know what a CCA adder is there's tons of videos on it I'll put one in the description because I'm not really good at explaining them so what is different about this one than any normal CCA adder well you'll notice there's a lot more weird signals that don't seem useful those are all priming signals so this one right here is a priming signal for the first XOR gate let's actually build a XOR gate we'll go back down here and build some logic so we got some logic right here just a normal XOR gate we got the two input signals and we got the priming signal but yeah this is just a classic one tick XOR gate that we're about to make into a zero tick so yeah if both inputs are on the input is off if one is on it's on if the other one is on it is on actually that's kind of hard to see we'll do that if one is on it's on and if both of them are off it's off just a normal XOR gate um, but it's not quite this simple there's it's not just as simple as putting a bunch of primed comparators in them in the right order and expecting it to work for example if we did this and put the priming signal over here instead of in the middle this does not work if we have both signals on it's off 
we have one on, it's on. However, if we flip this and we have one signal on, it should be on, but it's not. This is due to sub-tick mechanics because it takes just a little bit longer for this signal to reach this compare or repeater. And that means that instead of allowing the signal through, it actually blocks these comparators, which makes this a little bit harder to design and work with. But after you finish it, it makes it so much faster. So let's go back up here. So we have a primed XOR gate here. We have a primed XOR gate here with this priming signal here. We have um, for the signal strength extender, we actually use two primed comparators, primed inverters, I guess is a better use. And then the carry logic is primed down here. The only delay, the only actual um, thing that causes delay are these two repeaters, which I need because you need in a CCA adder, at least an 8-bit CCA adder, you need to have a a signal strength of 15 um, going into the carry lines, the carry logic lines. And unfortunately, I have not come up with a way to make a signal strength extender that goes up to 15 using only comparators. So for now, one tick is the limit, but maybe I'll come up with something in the future. So actually, let's look at this signal strength extender and figure out how it works. So no how it works is basically it takes a signal strength from 0 to 15 and converts it into a signal strength of 13 regardless and the reason i'm using this is just so i can get kind of a high signal strength out it's actually a signal strength of 12 regardless of any of the inputs it's always going to be 12 but how it works is basically let's say you have a signal strength of one in this line and you want the output to be a signal strength of 13. So what it does is it takes, it subtracts from this signal strength of 14 coming into this comparator. And if it's anything greater than zero here, that means it will be 13 or less here. Now, if it's 13 or less here, that allows this 13 signal strength signal through. So if it's anything greater than zero, it will allow the signal, the signal through. That's how that signal strength extender works. It's not really a repeater, it's more of an extender. So yeah, that's how that works. Something to note is this is not an ALU. This is still an adder, still in the beginning phases. It shouldn't be too hard to convert to an adder because we can still use the same concept for the XOR gate to make invert A and invert B to keep this at one tick. Um, this should definitely be possible to stay at one tick for the ALU, which is really cool. Um, and then for all the logical operations, let's take flood carry for an example. For flood carry, I could just not prime this comparator, meaning this comparator never turns on, meaning this comparator never gets blocked, and it will always allow the signal through, flooding the carry. For cancel carry, we could just not prime this comparator, meaning that this never turns on regardless of the input and we have cut off the carry um i haven't really worked out how to do or or um xor or all that stuff um, but it shouldn't be too hard um we have c in here or carry in repeater means carry in no repeater means no carry in and then we have carry out here so let's do some examples let's do three plus five so 3 plus 5 should equal 8, and you'll notice we have an extra lamp here. This is the timing lamp. This just proves that it is, it is actually a 1 tick adder. So if we follow this, it's 1 tick, 2, 3, 4, 5 ticks to the lamp. And if we follow this to the input, it's 1, 2, 3, 4 ticks to the input. So there's a 1 tick difference there. So if this lamp lights on at the exact same time as the output does, that means it's a 1 tick adder. So we'll start her up. There's a long delay there, so I can just watch it. And we got an output of 8, and it turned on the, at the exact same time as the timing lamp. Um, let's test the carry line. So we'll just turn on all the carries. So this 
should just be carry out, but it shil it still should turn on at the exact same time as the other lamp, which it does, and we got to carry out. Um, let's do one more. We'll do 7 plus 14. Oh, 7 and 14, so that should be 21, which is 10101. 10101, and it turned on at the exact same time as the other lamp. So that just shows that it is actually working and it is a one tick adder. So this is going to be turned into an ALU and then that's going to be used in my CPU. So yeah, that's about it for the um, adder, but this does not, this mechanic doesn't just stop at an adder. Like, for example, I'm experimenting with using it to make an instant BCD converter, or at least very close to instant, um, which would really help with a lot of things. I mean, this could be used for anything. Anything that needs comparators can be improved by this method. Um, it's still a little tedious at this point. I don't really understand all the mechanics. Like, for example, if you replace this observer with a repeater, it breaks. I have no idea why, but it breaks. Um, so yeah, I'm still learning how all the weird things work, but um, yeah, this is just the kind of the prototype. You know, I'm I'm redesigning it over here to be a little bit better and faster and allow for a low signal strength in instead of a high signal strength in, which will make it a little bit nicer to use. But yeah, that's about it for this. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions, put them in the comments below and I'll try to help. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching and I'll see you later.